Hey guys, welcome to the channel, I'm Metapuppet. I recently made an AI film trailer for a fictional movie called Open Source, and when I was making it, I didn't really find much in the way of workflows for narrative AI films online. So I wanted to share my workflow with you. It's still very early days with AI video content, and I made a bunch of mistakes along the way, but I learned a lot, and maybe my workflow will help you if you're aspiring to make an AI film. Now, with the exception of two music tracks, everything else in the film I made is AI, and I'm going to go over each of the tools I used in the process. Now, I'm not going to deep dive into how each tool works because there are plenty of tutorials online for image prompting and things like that. So this is more of an overview of how to move through each tool in stages to go from script to screen using this AI workflow. So let's get right into it. Starting with the script, the story is the most important human element that we have. For my film, Open Source, I wrote the story myself using Final Draft, but for the sake of this video, let's just try it with ChatGPT and see how that would work. So I'm using ChatGPT4, and my storyline would go like this. Write a short story for a 90-second film trailer about a man named Dave who learns that he's living in a simulation that's ending in three days. And this is what it gave me. It's got descriptions for the scenes. It's got a narrator. It's got the dialogue. It's totally different from my story, but it's super cool that you can start with something like this as opposed to a blank screen. So let's say that you like this. Now you can even go further and you can ask ChatGPT to storyboard it for you. And here you go. Here's the visuals. Here's the sound effects in each scene. You can even go a step further by telling it to write detailed prompts for the scenes that you can use in image generation tools like Midjourney, which is what I used. So let's say that you have your script. Now it's time to create your characters. So for my film, I used Midjourney to create the images, and Midjourney runs through Discord. If you're new to it, I recommend trying the newbie rooms. You can learn a lot about what you like and what you don't like. So to start, you would just hit backslash, imagine, enter. And now you would write your prompt. So I did something like this. Portrait, cinematic, a 35-year-old man, office worker, permanent 5 o'clock shadow on his face, neutral expression, gray background, film still, photorealistic, 8K. I've seen people do 32K. And now for parameters in mid-journey, you would do dash dash. And let's do AR space 16 by 9. And that stands for aspect ratio. And 16 by 9 is landscape mode like your TV. I'm also going to do dash dash style raw, and that just tells it to not use Midjourney's default style. And then hit enter, and it sends the command. And a little tip, if you're losing your images because other people are generating theirs, you can just go up to search up here. You can type your username and click mentions user, and it's going to pull up all of your image generations here, and you can see these are ones that I've used for my character. You can also create your own server, and then you can get the mid-journey bot in your server, which is what I've done here. But again, if you're new to it, I recommend using the public channels. For the majority of my film, I did use the public channels. And here's the result that it gave me. You're gonna get four images, and if you like one of these, you can go ahead and upscale any one of them. This is image one, two, three, and four. So you can use these U buttons to upscale them. You can use V buttons to do variations on them. Let's say we wanted to vary number three, we we'd click V3, and here is your prompt, and you can make a tweak to the prompt and hit submit, which will remix it. You can also just re-roll it with this button right here. You can also go to the Midjourney website and you'll be able to see all of your generations here as well. And you can see the prompts that were used for each generation. So after dozens and dozens of times generating characters, ultimately, I went with this guy as my character, Dave. And here's his portrait. And what you can do, which I recommend doing, is click Open in Browser. And you can right-click and save the image into whatever folder you like. And then copy the URL. And I'd recommend starting a document with your characters. And you can paste the screenshot if you want, paste the URL there. You can see I've done it a bunch of times but we're gonna need this later and that's gonna save you a lot of trouble. Now what you can do to create this character in different scenes is hit backslash imagine and paste that URL in the beginning, hit the space bar and then type your prompt. A 35 year old man playing at the beach with his son in the waves. And we'll do cinematic 
32K, aspect ratio of 16 by nine, style raw. And now we're going to do IW, which is image weight. And we're going to make this one. You can go anywhere from 0 0.1 to two. So one is right in the middle. And while that's working, I'm just going to uh, copy that prompt again. And let's do image weight two, just to see what the difference would be. And so here are the results with an image weight of one. And you can see this is the problem of generating consistent characters in different scenes. Yeah, there's similarities, but you know, clearly not the same guy. This is an example of the same prompt, but with an image weight of two, which is maximum. And you see that it's copying his expression and whatnot. Here's our picture zoomed out. And you can see he's clearly not having a good time. So what can we do? Let's try upscaling number three here. There are certain apps, I think like Reface is one where you can switch the face, but there's another one called InSwapper, which I already have installed. And I'm just going to um, see what this looks like. It's from PixAI, and this is the face now swapped. It's stylized a little bit, so I, I ended up not really using it, but it's just an example of some of the solutions that are currently out there to get consistent character generation. You're going to have to do this quite a lot of times. I think, you know, on this project there, I have over 1400 generations. So what did I do? I worked it into the storyline. My storyline is about a guy, this guy, Dave, who learns that he is living in an AI simulation. So I tried to get around that problem in a creative way by working it into the storyline. Do I look different to you? So once I had my character, I knew what he looked like. I wanted to know what he sounded like. And for that, I used 11 labs. So I started with my main character and I found a voice that I liked. I used Josh. And for a workflow, what I would recommend doing is copying all of this character's dialogue in your script and just pasting it into the box and generate an audio file for each of them. Don't worry about it being good at this point because it won't be, it'll be pretty bad. And now I have a file. I used Premiere Pro as the editing software. One thing I want to say is organization is key because you're going to be generating a lot of images, a lot of audio takes. So be organized with the folders. You can see I have a mid journey folder here for images. And then inside of that, I have subfolders for all the different things we're seeing. Here's 11 labs. This is where I have my character's voices and I started breaking them down by date. And then I think within there, I have a description of what the line is. So really try to be organized when you're doing this. Then cut up each character's dialogue so that you have the whole story on the timeline. I recommend doing it this way because it will give you an idea about length and pacing. But also I found that it helped me with the inflection of each character's line. So you're going to have to go back and generate hundreds of lines and you might like one character's delivery, but it doesn't sync up with the line before it or after it from another character. I created hundreds of sound bites per character, but once I had it on a timeline, it at least gave me some sense of structure for the story. So once you have everything laid out, you're going to have to go back into 11 labs and then just generate take after take of each line. You can see on the sliders where it says stability, more variable, and it gives you a little warning that it could make the uh, speech unstable. And that's true. However, don't be afraid of that. I mean, go right into that. The best results that I got were kind of all in this range right here. So I did like 30 different versions of this one line. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. <laughs> I don't want to lose you. 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 And that's like what you would do with a voice actor. You'd say, all right, give me the line this way. Now give it to me this way. You don't want the same thing every time. And so that's kind of what this simulates. So I did this for each line, for each character, and then it's just mixing and matching the ones that you like to get your final sound. So now that I knew what my characters looked like and sounded like, I started getting images for the actual script. So the first shot I needed was a suburban street with houses. I generated a few images. I liked this one. So I saved it in a folder and moved on to the next shot. And I did that for all the shots of my film. When I started playing it back in the timeline, you can Hello. see everything is I static. And, and wherever I had the dialogue, the audio, 
I would just put the character's still image there over the dialogue. So this just gave me an idea of, again, pacing for the story. Since this is a workflow tutorial, I'm not going to go through each image and prompts and all that. There's a lot of prompting tutorials out there. But after you do your character's portraits and then audio, you can start getting the other images you need for your script. Once I had my images in the timeline, I wanted to turn them into videos. So for that, I used Runway ML and Pika Labs. In Runway ML, you can go to the Generate Videos tab here, and they have a Gen 2 text or image to video generator. We're not using text because we generated our images of our characters that we want to see. So you can go ahead and take an image that you've generated and drop it right into this bar. Right here, you've got motion and it's set to five. You can set it to uh, from one to 10 and we'll keep it at five for this. And then you could add camera control, horizontal, vertical, zoom, roll, speed. We're just going to leave all that still right now. You can do image plus description and say something like, you know, the horse head moves where the hair is blowing. So you can add that as well. And we're going to click generate. You can see that I have interpolate off. That's going to smooth out the frames. And that's something that I don't want because we're going to upscale these later anyway. All right. And that took probably about a minute and a half to do. And here is our video. Yeah. Super weird. Let's see what it looks like giving it some instruction course chewing. We're going to add a little camera movement. We're going to zoom out and for speed, let's just knock it down to one and let's generate that. Once we have more control over these things, it's going to get a lot easier to get what you're looking for. All right. And here's our result. Click play. And you can see the camera is zooming out. The horse's mouth is kind of making like a chewing motion. Ultimately, this guy gets a little bit cartoony. An alternative is from Pika Labs. I basically used the backslash animate command, drop a photo in. We'll do that same photo of the horse head. One thing in Pika that I did was negative prompts. And in Pika, for a parameter, it's just a single dash and then the parameter, unlike Mid Journey, which has the two dashes. So I would do dash neg. And then a space and in quotes, I would put blurry, pixelated, cartoon, and vector art. Those are all things that I don't want. So I'll put that in there first. Let's do a motion of one. And also at the top, I'm going to give that same instruction of horse chewing. And I'll submit that. This is what it gives us. Make this full screen. You can go ahead and just click reroll if you wanted to reroll it. But let's see what our next command gave us. Here we go. Not really much better. His eyes are super off. So that's kind of weird. So basically, you can reroll again, and you're going to end up doing this a lot of times. But I did a little trick with this shot, and I'll show you that in a bit. Now for the dialogue scenes, where we see my character speaking, there are a couple ways you can go about doing it. One of them is called wave to lip. And this is something that you have to copy it onto your Google Drive and you can install these dependencies here. So it's a little bit techy. First thing you have to do is set up wave to lip up here. Just press that play button and it will start loading. Okay, that took 52 seconds for that to load. Once that is done, go all the way down to lip sync on your video file. So we're going to click play right there. Now you see right here, it has this choose file section. Now to do this, you have to export your Pika clip, just the video, and you have to export a WAV file of the audio line. Make sure that the video and the audio are the same length. I'm gonna click open, there it is. And now I am uh, going to go to step three, select audio. You have to first hit the play button here. Now here's the choose files button, and here is my audio, click open there. There's my audio, and now I'm gonna go down to step four, start crunching and preview output. So here's our final video preview, let's hit play. Do things seem a little off to you? So you can see that it worked, however his mouth is weird. Do things seem a little off to you? And that's the thing about AI video right now, there's not one solution yet. I see new lip syncing techniques come up all the time. For my video, I use DID to animate the mouth movements. It's really simple to do. Create an account. They'll give you some free credits in the beginning. Go to create video. 
And all I did here was upload the image from Midjourney. So here's my guy. And then I uploaded the audio clip that I wanted him to say in this scene. And then I just hit generate video. I'm out of credits right now, so I'll just show you the result here in my video library. But I have a family. So I did a line by line, and you can see that it animates things like, uh, like the blinking and the head movement. Okay. Now, DID does tend to have robotic appearance to it, which I thought actually worked for my story since my main guy just realized that he's an AI character. So I ended up using DID for all of the dialogue scenes in my film. Now, I do believe that the head movement that DID generates is the same every time. Like, for example, at two seconds, the head tilts down and to the right, and then there's a blink in there. So what I did to avoid that is when I was getting my audio clip, I would change the in and out points so I'd have different timing options with the DID video. So I generated each line a couple of times with different in points so that we wouldn't always see the same head movement in the same places as the character spoke. You can also just run an image through DID with a silent audio track. So basically they'll say nothing, but you'll get the head movement, which you could use for a cutaway or something like that. And that's actually what I did with this shot. I was having problems getting a clear character. I just ran it with a silent audio track, had his head move around a bunch, and then later in the cut, I masked him out and I had the horse that was moving from the Pika video. I don't even know and here saying. you can see the finished product. You've got him looking realistic and you've got the horse chewing or whatever it's doing. Right. Also, the nice thing about DID is that the videos come back in full resolution, so there's no need for upscaling later. And you're going to have to upscale anyway. And there are a couple of ways to do that. So let's talk about upscaling. A popular and easy solution is from Topaz Labs. However, it costs $299. I tried it out in trial mode. Here's the preview. Obviously, it's watermarked. And you can see compared to the original, there is more clarity in his face and the sheets are more crisp than over here. The horse, yes, it looks clearer, but it's not something I was going to pay $300 for. And there's actually a free solution, which is what I ended up using. And that is called Automatic 1111. Like Wave to Lip, it's a bit more technical. I'm on a Mac and you have to install it through Terminal on a Mac, but give it a shot, follow the instructions and see if you can get it working. If you can't, message me in the comments and I'll do my best to help out. And by the way, if you're liking this video so far, please subscribe to the channel and give it a like. So let's say I have this video clip that I wanna up-res. What you need to do is export this as a PNG file. So make sure you have it in its own sequence and then go to export, format, PNG, and remember organization is key, create an 1111 folder. And then I created a two folder. Inside of that, I created a subfolder of a description of what we were seeing in the scene, and this is backdoor. Inside automatic 1111, you're gonna go to the extras tab and upload your image. So I'm going to go to my 1111 folder, to backdoor, and then you can pick any image. I'll just start with this one. And we're going to drop that in. I played with these sliders at the bottom until I got the realistic effect that I was looking for. I know that if you increase the weight, this one up here, click generate. I got something that was a little bit more stylized and soft. And this slider down here, when I increase them, you get a little bit sharper, more photorealistic thing. However, you can see that it kind of like put an eyeball right there. Whereas in the original, he's looking down and I want him looking down on his laptop. I don't want him looking at us. So that is a little bit too much. So I'd have to drop it back. And basically you're just going to have to play with these sliders for each shot that you do. Once you get the look that you like, we're going to click this subfolder backdoor, which contains our PNG files, right click on a Mac, hold option and select copy backdoor as path name and then paste that in there. And for the output directory, you would create a from folder in 1111 and then a subfolder in there, which is named the same thing backdoor and right click, hold option on a Mac, select copy backdoor as path name, and then just click generate. And there we are, we've got all of our frames. Once it's finished, you see these zeros here, they're a problem, we have to get rid of them. So you can select a file and hit on a Mac Command A to select all of them. Right click, go down to rename, and then just click rename. This will just number them sequentially. Inside Premiere, I have my 1111 folder, 
And here is backdoor, command I for import. And I'm going to go to the from folder in 11.11, not to, but from backdoor. And I'm gonna select the first file and I am going to click show options. Make sure image sequence is selected, click import. And here is our upres file. I'm gonna bring it in and you can see that it's shorter than the original. So hit command J on a Mac and change the speed to 80%. You can leave it on frame sampling or do frame blending or optical flow. I'll just do blending for this. And we can see now that it is the same length. Then you simply take your file and you just drop it back into the finished piece. But I built a back door into now to do this on every shot would be very time consuming. So if I had a shot that maybe didn't have people in it or was bright and well exposed, I just added the sharpen effect in Premiere and set it to anywhere between 20 and 40. This shot gave me some problems right here. Here's the original mid journey image. And you can see this is from Pika, the movement, the blinking, whatnot. And I used 1111 on the eyes and it wasn't working. It was doing just some weird things with the lines. It made her eyes look weird. So what I actually did was I created a mask and what we're actually seeing in the finished product is the eye from the original mid journey image. And where it goes in and out like that are just some keyframes that I added to give it the effect that she was blinking. So the eyes look nice and clear compared to the original. This is one of my favorite shots. Uh, this guy's head in the printer and we see everything moving around. And if we open it up, we can see the original mid journey image is just a static shot like that. I actually took this guy into DID and it worked. It animated his mouth. What? So it gave him that one, that little movement. What? But you see, there's no papers flying around. That's something that came from Pika. But you look at his face. It's certainly not clear or anything like that. So what I did was I combined the two and I just created a mask around his face. And so we get the best of both worlds. You can see he says what, his face moves, and the papers are flying around. I also have a film grain applied over the entire video. You know, without it, it's very clean. And I just thought a little film grain gave it a nice cinematic touch. I think it contributes to a subconscious sense of things moving and not being so still. And there were certain shots where depending on the composition of the shot and the lighting, like this bedroom shot here, I added a dust particle overlay just to give it a sense of some movement to the scene. You can see it's only at 30% if I bump it up. You can really see the particles in it right now floating around. So little visual tricks like that will help bring your film to life. Now we've talked a lot about video, so let's talk about the audio for a little bit. One thing that really helps me with pacing is music. And for some reason, I wanted an 80s pop song in this, and I couldn't get Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears for Fears out of my head. I figured there was no way I could get the rights to use that, but I had heard that there was this music service licked that offered low cost licensing for well known songs and not just stock music. So I gave that a shot. They didn't have the original Tears for Fears song available, but they did have these high quality covers, and I ended up using two of them in my film. The first track is low key and perfect for the scenes where my character has just learned that his life isn't real, and the second track has this instrumental crescendo in the same key as the first track which is perfect for the emotional shift when my character is thinking of his family and having an existential crisis and the time for him to make a decision is running out. I paid $15 for the monthly membership and each track was only $8. That's $31 for two professional high quality songs, which is well worth it to me because I think it really elevates the film emotionally. But I needed more music for the film and for that, I turned to Sound Raw to create some AI music. You can hear it in the scenes where my software developer character is informing the main character about the real world. In SoundRaw, you can select things like genre, mood, like uh, let's do suspense, theme, this is cinematic. It's also a trailer, but you can pick anything you want. You can select instruments and it'll generate a bunch of tracks for you. Once you get a track you like, you can then go in and you can change the energy on different segments of the tracks from low all the way up to very high. You can even then go into pro mode and you can change bass, drums, backing, and melody. You can change the fills. You can change the length of the song, the beats per minute, 
the key, which was very helpful if you need to match another music track. So this was great, and I ended up using it for two songs in my movie. So we've talked about the visuals, we've talked about the music, but there is one thing that oftentimes gets very overlooked, even though it's crucial in filmmaking, and that is sound effects. Sound, after all, is 50% of a film. Every scene in my movie has some natural sound in it, whether it's ambient background sound. There's a lawnmower starting, there's some uh, dogs barking in the scene, or this lovely woman eating right here. Once those sounds are in it, even if they're tucked down very, very low, even barely audible, like this bedroom shot here, which just has some room tone in it, it does add to the overall experience of watching the film. We're tricking our minds into believing that what we're seeing is real. And right now, even if you're in a room that's dead quiet, your ears are picking up something. So don't leave that out of your film because it makes a big difference, even if the viewer can't pinpoint why. I have a subscription to Adobe, so I use some sounds from their stock library. But honestly, you can find so many sound effects on YouTube that are completely free, so I definitely recommend searching there. So those are all of the elements and tools that I use to make my film. From there, I just kept going over the timeline, pass after pass, tweaking images or generating new videos. And then I stepped away for a couple days and came back to it with fresh eyes to make some final tweaks. You might find something different that works better for you. And if you do, let me know because I'm always looking to learn something new. So I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. And I really hope you have fun with this stuff because when I was a kid, I wished I could make a movie without leaving my bedroom. And although I'm not a kid anymore, I made this movie without leaving my bedroom. These tools are lowering the technological barrier for making movies, which means that more and more people around the world will be able to share new stories. I mean, have you ever looked at Hollywood movies that come out and say to yourself, this is the same thing over and over again. When are they going to come out with something new? This is how. And it probably won't come from Hollywood, but it'll probably come from you and me. It's an exciting time for filmmaking. So get to work, share your videos with me. I really wanna see what you create and I'll share my next one with you too. Happy filmmaking, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the future.